Hi, um, this is Nukyang there from Realty X Light. And in this video, I'm gonna break down uh, this entire scene, hoping that it gives you the motivations and you know, to pump you up, you know, to chase your VFX journey. So let's get started. Number one, as always, I start with looking for some reference online and I feel like this Iron Man garage will look cool, you know, so that I just download this one. And um, the rest of the reference are, I know that they're just like pretty much random. But I try to find a way to connect them and then stitch them together. Then once I'm done with the reference, then I start modeling all the assets that I'm going to use, um, which will not be available on the internet. So luckily I found this BMW i8 model here on Sketchfab. Uh, big shout out to Solza who modeled this car. So I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check this out. Once I have all the assets, then I start animating the car, uh, starting with the door. And when it attached to the car, I animate the whole chassis, you know, to show the impact of the door slamming on the, on the side of the car. Then I use driver to animate these wheels so that I don't have to, you know, reanimate anything in case I want to make changes down the line. I simply take the UI locations of these empty objects where I parent the whole car. Then I use this value to drive the X rotations of the wheel. Then if you want to increase or decrease the result value, then you can use this script expression and then multiply the value to get your desired rotation. And for the second set, which is this falling BMW logo, I use a rigid body simulation for this one. So let me um, show you a quick example for this one. I already baked this simulation data, but the setup is pretty simple. Just select the logo and then add this um, rigid body physics. So uh, set it to active. Then select the plane, give the same rigid body, uh, but this time set the type to passive. And then if you play bigger simulations, you will get something like this. Once you're happy with the looks, just hit F3 and then search for bake. And then you can just bake uh, them out in the keyframe. So the reason why we bake all this data to the keyframe is to save up the performance. And then we're going to use the logo to paint on this plane. I use dynamic paint for this one. So what's happening here is that when this logo hits the plane, then it uses this logo as the brush and paint it on this plane. Uh, it can be whatever and not just this plane. Then I change it to image sequence instead of this uh, weight paint and then I export it as image sequence. Once I'm done with exporting the sequence, then I open After Effects and then I uh, load all the sequence and this is how it looks in order to see these spread effects what you need to do is go back to uh, blender and enable these spread options before you export but this thing alone doesn't look so interesting so I pre-compose that footage then I add uh, this turbulent displacement and then I animate the amount then I pre-compose it again in order to extract the black color as alpha uh, which is pretty simple. Then just add white solid below the pre-compose layer and then use the black as luma mat. Then I pre-compose that again to extract the edges out of it. So to do this, you simply need to duplicate the pre-compose layer and then use simple choke. If you increase the choke mat amount, then you can get more and more of the edge from that. Then just use alpha inverted mat on the original layer. And that's how you get the edges. Now I duplicate another layer without any effects, which I renamed it as alpha. Now when I export this image sequence and re-import it to Blender, then I use it as materials, it looks like this. Now we can use any texture instead of this black and white mask. Um, that's all I set up here in Blender. So the rest will be done from Unreal Engine. So let's go back to the original Blend file. And for the next shot, there's nothing fancy here. I just animate this logo up and then I attach to the bonnet. To get this dynamic looking effect, I simply animate the focal length of this camera. But the only problem is that we can't use this focal length animation data in Unreal Engine, meaning we have to reanimate it there. But we need to do this in Blender before we migrate it to Unreal, you know, to see everything, how it's gonna look. And then it comes to this shot, uh, nothing fancy, just a simple, you know, camera rotation. And then the last shot, which is just this car, you know, leaving the garage scene. Comes to the next shot. 
I model this road, which is just a simple plane, and then I use array modifier with a spline, you know, to curve the, the road. And the background is just one big plane with mountain on it. This is the most simple scene I've ever did uh, for the past two years. To add this camera shake, I go to graph editor and then add noise modifier on the Z axis and then play around with the strength and the scale, you know, to get the shaky energy that I want. Then I use Datasmith to send all the scene to Unreal Engine. And if you want to know more about all the process of this Blender to Unreal Engine thingy, then you can just go to my Patreon and see for yourself. Now we are in Unreal Engine. As we can see right here, uh, I use Dynamic Paint Image Texture, you know, to blend the ambient occlusion and the revealing texture. So Unreal has these blend materials like Blender, but the setup is quite complicated actually. So if I take a deep look at this node setup, uh, this is how it looks, um, which is quite scary to be honest. I, I don't even understand all the node setup, which is not necessary anyway because I use Cinema 40 materials uh, for this one. So all I need to know is this four node setup, then I'm good to go. I'm just kidding guys. Like I try to figure this out by myself, but I can't. So I just ask my uh, buddy uh, Sumit Das to help me out with this one. And yeah, he figured out how to do this one, the technical part. So thank you so much, buddy, for this one. Now I can blend any two materials using this black and white texture, exactly like how we used to do back in Blender. And once it levitates, then I jump to the next scene, uh, which is this one. And here I use automotive materials, uh, which you can find it on Epic Library, which is free, by the way, so that you don't have to set up anything. As we can see from here, uh, we don't see any transition. And this is because I can't use automotive materials, clear code, combined with flakes, and then blends with another materials, like we did it for the ground. Um, so I figure out another way, uh, which is to duplicate the entire Unreal project file. I apply black materials to the rest of the scene, except the mesh that I'm gonna use it for um, the transition, as we see it right here. I applied it on the side and the wall as well. And this shot is exactly the same as the previous colored version. The only difference is just the materials. Now, if we open this shot, which is the same Unreal project file, just another map, I can do this in Blender and data smith it again, but I feel like doing it in another way around, uh, meaning I set up the basic scene in Unreal and then I model the things that needs to be modeled in Blender and then I just take it back. And the only model that needs to be done here is the road. And like I said, this is the super simple. All the assets except for the car and the roads are from Quixel Bridge, meaning I don't have to set up in Blender anyway. One cool trick to keep in mind is this console command that I use here. Uh, if I disable this temporal AA up some plane, then we're not gonna get this weird looking depth of field anymore, uh, which bothers me for quite some time. The other cool things about this scene is that it runs around like 70 frames per second, uh, which is like uh, three times more than real time, okay? Let me quickly show you guys um, what are my render settings. I use this movie render queue to export all the frames. I go to these settings and add this lighting only for the AO pass, but this is not exactly like AO, but more uh, like AO with lighting, okay? Then I also uh, use this anti-aliasing and then use temporal AA for the method and then I uh, export out at uh, 4K. Once I'm done with all this render, then I compile all the sequence here in After Effects. Now, if I scroll this timeline, uh, this is the final render. Now, let me break down how I compose all this scene. The first layer is this AO with lighting that I export. And then we see this layer with the beauty pass. And the way I extract this layer is by using the black and white materials that I previously showed to you guys, uh, which is this one. To extract just the beauty pass, you need to add this beauty render below the black and white mask and then set the track matte option to Luma matte. And if you can't find this one, just enable these options. Then we can see another layer, uh, which is just emission. So to get this pass, go back to Unreal Engine materials and set the white to black and then emission glow stands to zero and then render it out again. 
So if I scroll the timeline, this is how it looks. So I render this out, then I add that on top of everything, and then set the blend mode to add. After that, I pre-compose everything and do some color grading in this composition. Then I add this comp in the master composition. I use the same technique for all the other scenes, but slightly different, okay? So let me show you how I compile this scene, starting from the bottom. The first layer is to get the reflections on all the glass objects, like the door, the window glass, and the headlight. On top of that, I render exactly the same, but I hide all the transparent materials. And the reason why I do this is because Unreal is not that good when it comes to translucent materials. Then I add this transparent render on top of the uh, opaque one, and then I, I adjust the opacity to give the impression of that this is a glass. And then I duplicate the opaque layer, and then I grade it a little bit, and I use soft light, uh, you know, to blend them together. Then the rest of the layers are now uh, the same as the previous shot. But for the last shot, I don't do anything crazy. You know, this is just a simple compilation of uh, all the other shots. Then I add all these shots together in one comp, and this is the final result. This Unreal Engine project file and After Effects files will be available on my Patreon. Um, there will be no step-by-step -step, uh, guide tutorial for this one, but there will be specific parts uh, which are not obvious, uh, like for beginner. So I will add that one on my Patreon. And then thank you so much guys for uh, watching this video. Please subscribe for more video like this. And then I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.